Wander Wealthy Podcast, episode 198. Well, hey there. Welcome back to another episode of the Wander Wealthy Podcast. My name is Tess Wicks. I am the host, founder of Wander Wealthy, and business coach for all the money coaches, financial coaches, wealth coaches, even the money mindset coaches of the world. This week, we have a great episode for you. We're going to be diving into the question, what do you need to be a money coach? What's required of you? How do you know if you're ready to start money coaching? And hopefully, you'll get the answers in this podcast episode and you'll be able to identify if there's anything more for you to learn, any more experience you need to gain, or if you're ready to step out into the world of money, financial, wealth, coaching, whatever you please to call it, and start sharing your expertise and changing lives. So I think this is going to be a really important episode because so many of us feel caught up and almost delayed by our own beliefs that we need to be certified, that we need more experience, that we couldn't possibly start coaching if we're not entirely confident, that we need a program, that we need testimonials. And it kind of turns into that chicken or the egg scenario where, you know, in applying for jobs. They require you to have some experience in the industry. But if you don't, if this is your first job or if you're changing careers, it's like, how do you get experience if you need this job in order to get experience? But how can you apply for any job if you don't have any experience? You know, you know what I'm saying? I don't think I need to explain anymore. I feel like we've all had and faced that conundrum. And so I think this is important to, to, crack open. Of course, before we do, there's only five days left of enrollment for the Wealthy Coach Blueprint, maybe six. Well, let's say business days. So today, tomorrow, and then Monday, Tuesday. So four days left, technically. To get enrolled inside of the Wealthy Coach Blueprint, we are kickstarting things after the holidays on January 4th. And the Wealthy Coach Blueprint, if you're brand new, is my 12-week business coaching program specifically and uniquely suited for coaches who help their clients navigate the world of money, whether that's a mindset approach or a tactical budgetary or, you know, any other financial approach. It's really to help you build your business, understand how to best serve your clients, know how to find them, market to them, and bring them into your business by means of sales, and then ultimately delight them and provide them with a truly life-changing experience. So if you have been thinking about either needing to get a jump start, a fresh start, a renewed perspective on your current money coaching business, or if you've been thinking about coaching for quite a while and you just aren't sure if you're ready or not, remember, ready is a decision. It's not a feeling. And you can decide to make it today. So wanderwealthy.com slash apply will give you all the details that you're possibly looking for. And if you have continued questions, that's exactly why we have a strategy session call that we typically require before enrolling anyone in the blueprint. And that's because I want to make sure that this is going to be the best next step forward for you. And I also want to make sure that the blueprint is something that can really help you get to where you want to go. And so we'll do this session and we'll take the opportunity to get to know each other. I'll ask you about your business, your goals, and then Truly, if I know that the blueprint can help you get to that point, then we talk about all of the nitty gritty details that you need to know about the blueprint to make the best decision for you. So wanderwealthy.com slash apply. There are only a couple of days left. We already have spots filling up and only a few left. So if you want to jump in and get those spots, sign up for your strategy session and let's see if we're going to make 2021 the year that you build, grow, and scale your money coaching business. Wanderwealthy.com slash apply. All right. So what do you need to be a money coach? I think where we can start this episode is just to define what a coach is. 
because I think we all have our own idea of what it might be. And honestly, everyone's idea might be right. And maybe my definition of a coach is wrong or inaccurate, but this is what I truly believe makes a coach a coach. The coach's role is to provide guidance, to provide accountability, and to provide support to a client in order to help the client reach their goals faster and more effectively than if they tried to do it on their own. That's it. The coach provides a container in which the client can commit to and invest in to get change, to get on the right path. The coach will provide potentially kind of the the guidelines, the step-by-steps, because likely the coach has kind of perfected those or has found a path that really suits them and probably most likely suits their ideal client. And the coach is there every step of the way to make sure that the client is taking the information. Maybe the coach has to educate the client so that they truly understand what is behind each of these steps. And then they're there every step of the way to make sure that they're actually implementing upon that information. And then if there's something that kind of falls outside of the information that is provided, if the client has continued questions or maybe hits a sticking point, can't quite comprehend why it is they're doing what they're doing or how it makes sense, that's where the support comes in so that the client can truly make progress towards their goals. Because likely a client is seeking out a coach because they've either been doing it by themselves for too long and haven't been seeing the results or they're brand new and know that it's going to take them longer to go do the research and figure it out, or they just really don't have the mental capacity to figure it out. So they are hiring a coach to help them. Okay? Okay. So what do you need to be a coach? I think this might surprise you. So I'm saying that at the top. I believe that there are only really three things that you need in order to be a coach, a money coach in particular. I think the first thing that you need is to start with integrity. You need to be in integrity with how you can help someone. And obviously, kind of, I think, showing that you walk your talk. Okay. If you don't do what you coach others to do, then a lot of times you're going to feel out of alignment with what you're saying. Now, there is a time and a place, for instance, when I'm coaching my clients money coaching wise, when I'm working with my money coaching clients, when they're at the very beginning of their journey, I require them to budget much more specifically and be much more aware and particular about tracking their transactions and making sure it all fits into the budget. And I myself don't budget to that degree any longer, but I did and then I grew out of it. And so in order to get to that point, I think that's really important, but having the integrity that either you've, you've done it yourself until you advance to a new level or you're actually doing the exact same thing, right? You have to walk your talk or if you have to have at least walked your talk. That's where starting with integrity comes in. Now, that doesn't mean that every single step of the way you have had to do it. Because here's the other thing. Newsflash. Not newsflash. Spoiler alert? No. Maybe this is just like a (gasps) shocking moment. But I did not follow every step of the Wealthy Coach Blueprint to build my financial coaching business. You want to know why? Because I took the long way. I did the trial and error. I made all of the mistakes. And I there were definitely some things that I did right, which I was like, okay, noted, this works. That's good. I'm gonna put that in the blueprint. Well, I didn't know I was building the blueprint, but as I look back, I'm like, here's the things that worked for me. Here's the mistakes that I made. Here's what I wish I would have done. Cause now hindsight's 2020, I can see clearly that that would have been way more effective. So In that regard, you may not be able to have had walked your talk, but 
you understand where you went wrong and what you should have done instead. I think at the end of the day, you are your first client always and forever. So you have either likely already coached yourself to get the results that you have now, or as a coach, you can look back and understand where you went wrong because you weren't coaching yourself, but you obviously still had to go through the process and go through the journey. And maybe your journey was a bit longer, but you still have a starting place, a finishing place, and now you can look back and identify where you would have been able to, to go right. Now, I say that, and I think still, there's going to be components of your coaching that you should be doing now, right? There's probably components of what you'll have your clients do that you still need to be doing too. For instance, I suggest that my clients update their net worth on a monthly basis or at the very least a quarterly basis, okay? This is something that I do on a monthly basis because I'm obsessed with numbers. I think all of us money coaches are. So I, I enjoy doing it on a monthly basis. I think it could be unhealthy if you don't have the correct kind of money mindset around it, but I update my net worth on a monthly basis. I manage my budget on a bi-weekly basis or twice a month. And these are things that I still do. Now, I don't do the the daily tracking because I've graduated out of it, but I'm still doing things that I would tell my clients to do if they were to graduate into that next step, which some of my clients have. And now we're kind of at the same level. We're, we're both kind of working on managing at this level. So there still has to be a sense of integrity. And I think that's what we really mean when we talk about integrity, especially in the coaching industry, is that you have to be doing something that you're teaching or have had done that. Like there has to be some element of you need to give people what you would do yourself. So I hope that's clear. And I think that honestly, that's a very easy thing to do, right? So this is not something that it's like, this is what you have to go out and search for or find. Like being in integrity, you probably already are, especially if you're at the beginning of your money coaching journey, then you're probably in integrity. Here's an example of what's not an integrity. Starting a business coaching business when you haven't had a business. That's not exactly an integrity. If you haven't grown your own business to a point that people want to grow their business to, then you probably aren't in integrity with what you're coaching, okay? So being in integrity with what what you have your clients do, meaning you either also do it and or you've done it in the past. So another thing with this integrity piece is that you get to continue coaching yourself towards goals that you have in the future as you continue to move forward. But now, because you're coaching yourself and you are your first client, you can also identify what went right, what went wrong, how could you have done it better, and you can package that up and help others. So identifying what really works for you, identifying maybe as you look back what worked, what didn't, identifying what would have worked better for you. All of those things are now going to be components to most likely help your ideal clients. Inside of the Wealthy Coach Blueprint, we have one of the key pieces of the program all surrounding identifying who you can help. A lot of money coaches who go through the Wealthy Coach Blueprint will determine that who they want to help are kind of past versions of themselves. A lot of times we are attracted to helping basically ourselves, but like a year ago or three years ago or 10 years ago, right? We want to help the people we used to be because those are the people we know best. Um, So that's how I started in my coaching business and that's how a lot of coaches start. However, you also might identify a group that isn't necessarily you a few years ago. There might be components. Maybe they have a similar mindset, but maybe like identity-wise, they actually do fall out of a different uh, genre of person than you would. And that's okay still. Like I still think as a coach, you can coach someone who falls in an entirely different demographic 
But there's still going to be principles of your coaching that you'll have them implement in their life. And you'll understand the concept of helping them get from point A to point B of what their goals are. And then you can be in integrity still by, first of all, continuing to be your first and best client because no matter what, you're your first client and you can also be your best client. Um, You should be at least. And there's a lot of coaching principles that still take place in, in coaching yourself, even if what you do for money is coaching an entirely different demographic. And then how you maintain integrity in that regard is identifying what could work, what could translate across the lines of the difference between you and your niche market. And what you will do then is really just research and understand what this demographic needs and how you can best serve and support them. So that can still come out of integrity, but there is another component in terms of what it takes to be a coach that I think helps to supplement any lack of integrity from the perspective of, I just didn't have the same lived experience, so I want to make sure I can best support them still. Okay, so even if your clients are different from you, you wouldn't have them do the same steps as you. There's still an important integrity aspect there that you can hone into and then know that, you know, there are some things that are still going to differ and you're going to stand in integrity and being honest with I didn't take this path and here's why. And likely it's either because there's a better path for you or my path wouldn't suit you because you have a different lived situation. You're in a different demographic. You have a different career, whatever it might be, okay? The last thing that falls under this integrity piece is as you move forward as a coach, you always want to make sure that you are being the client that you want to attract, okay? A lot of this looks like if you're asking people to invest in themselves for their future development, you're going to be more open-minded to investing in yourself. Another way that this plays out is that if you want your clients to show up to your calls on time, you're going to now show up to every call on time, right? If you don't show up to calls on time, those are the type of people that you're going to attract into working with you. If you are going to be really hesitant or resistant around making an investment in your own development, you're going to find a lot of that in the clients that you start to attract, right? We can model and we can kind of inspire action through being in integrity with what we're asking our clients to do. So, you know, if you're going to advocate for your clients to negotiate their salary, to charge their worth, to value their finances, you better be doing the same for yourself. You better be charging. You better be, you know, raising your rates. You better be advocating for your personal finances. Lastly, if you don't want your clients or potential clients to ghost you, Don't go to your coaches. That's just a little side note from me personally. (laughs) Wink, wink. Okay, let's go on to the second thing that it takes to be a coach. And this is another one that most money coaches, financial coaches, wealth coaches, money mindset coaches, you don't really have to go out and search for. You probably already have this. And it is the desire to serve. Okay? So much of building a business is going to be a challenge. There's a lot of challenging aspects to it. So remembering why you do this and who you're doing it for and the fact that you're going, you're doing this to serve them, to help them change their lives, to help them reach a goal. That is probably the reason you're even considering or you have already started to build your money coaching business because you do genuinely have this desire to serve. And that's all you need. Okay. And what you can do with that is you can take it and you can really define who you want to serve, right? Who do you want to make that impact with? And then from interviewing them and and talking to them and asking them questions, you can define how and what you can offer, how you can serve them and what you can offer in order to make what it is 
you are helping them achieve so much more effective in order to make that process more effective. So you will be able to take what you've essentially facilitated for yourself from that integrity piece, you know, ultimately having your story of going from A to B and then either completely replicating it for an ideal client who's very similar to you and has very similar goals to you or at least using some components of it to help your client get to whatever their goal is. Maybe it's different than what your goal is, but that's okay. You can still help them facilitate that or to help an entirely different demographic achieve their goals by understanding what you had to do even mentally, like what sort of changes you had to make from a mindset perspective, from a behavioral perspective in order to reach your goals and then replicating that or imitating that more so to help them achieve theirs. All you have to do in order to make that happen is have a desire to serve. Okay, the third piece that you need to be a money coach is resourcefulness or the willing to get resourceful. Maybe you don't feel very resourceful now. Maybe you're not sure how to be resourceful, but the willingness to become resourceful. And this is where we fill in those gaps, right? Like I was saying, integrity is important. Having the experience of taking yourself through your own process, even if it wasn't the best process, Having that is important. But at the end of the day, when you look back and you see that that wasn't the best, that wasn't the most direct route, or the people you want to help actually have an entirely different situation that you're going to have to help them through, you can be in integrity still. And then in order to fill any gaps, you get resourceful. Okay. Again, a coach's job is to provide that guidance first and foremost so that the client has direction. A lot of this guidance will naturally come from your own wisdom. Wisdom is knowledge and experience combined, okay? You've probably gained this from your own journey. You had to learn what you needed to know in order to get where you are, and then you develop the experience from actually trying and potentially failing and then trying again and then succeeding. But if there is anything lacking for you in terms of the wisdom that you need to provide guidance for your ideal clients, again, either because they have different goals than you or they are a completely different demographic than you, then you can access that wisdom through becoming resourceful. Now, I think what's important here is to know that you can still be learning and working on your own resourcefulness and working on your own, you know, your de- developing your own program and improving it and and developing your own understanding, you can still be working on that and be an effective coach. The truth is you only have to be one step ahead of your client to help them get to where you are, right? And a lot of times our clients want, you know, they see us and they see themselves in their future. They see that future vision and they want to become that. So you are just an evolved version of your client most of the time. Again, you might have that different demographic, but still your potential clients are going to see something in you that they want to emulate. That's likely why they're attracted to working with you because you've displayed that wisdom, that authority, that integrity that you walk your talk. Okay. So you really only have to be one step ahead of your client to to truly show up and serve them. And if you're willing to get resourceful, you're going to be able to do that without a hitch, okay? Sometimes even the gift of perspective can help you be a brilliant coach, right? If you have clients that fall completely out of your demographic, you maybe they've surpassed you, right? Maybe they, they're they making way more money than you, but you can still help them kind of see the forest beyond the trees, that perspective is still valuable. Plus the fact that you're willing to get resourceful to identify how do you manage this amount of money, right? Not all your clients are going to have a lower net worth than you, but you might have that perspective or the willingness to get resourceful to help them understand how to handle maybe a big windfall that maybe you've never experienced in your life. You can still keep your cool and help them navigate that. Okay, another way where I think um, resourcefulness gets put on the back burner is thinking we need to just know everything before we can put ourselves out there as the coach. And that's where certifications really come into play. Now, 
I'm not a hater of certifications by any means. I do think that certifications can be useful, but I don't think certifications mean you know enough. There are people who have certifications and still feel loads of imposter syndrome, still will never build their coaching business because they have the limiting beliefs that they won't be good at it or that they don't deserve to make money coaching or that they will be judged for putting themselves out there. So even though you might be thinking in your head, oh, in order to, um, I guess, in order to improve this, this limitation that I have, I should just go learn more and more and more. My issue with certifications and w- is when they're used as a Band-Aid or as a more of as a procrastination tool, right? A lot of us procrastinate to learn. We procrastinate by learning instead of acting, So by no means are certifications bad. I've gotten my own certification in certain coaching modalities that I find very useful. But I can say that had I not started coaching before I got my certification, I, if I probably, if I waited, first of all, I would have waited literally years. And second of all, the certification would have done nothing for me because there's still, there's a stark contrast between knowing and doing. Can you do it at the same time? I think absolutely. But I think it it can be so powerful to know that you, without a certification, without experience in the financial world, if you have your own experience to pull from, if you have a process that works for you, if you know a thing or two about basic personal finance, if you have a desire to help other people get to where you're at or, you know, parallel if it's an entirely different goal or an entirely different demographic. And if you're resourceful to go out and fill the gaps, if there's something that you don't know, to go out and identify that, that's going to be just fine. You're going to know everything you need to know. You're going to have everything you need to be a coach. And that's it. That's it. You actually don't need a certification. You don't need years of experience in the finance industry. You don't need a huge following. You don't need a website. You don't need, you don't need all the confidence in the world. After all, confidence comes from experience, not the other way around. You don't get confident and then do it. You, you do it and then you learn and then you get confident after trial and error, right? You don't need even a program, to be honest. I think it's beneficial, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit, but you don't need that. I didn't start with a program. I started with, hey, sign up, six calls, we'll make it happen, right? There was no like step-by-step framework. I kind of tried and figured it out along the way, and obviously, I eventually came to a point where I had something that I could refer to, but in the beginning, I was like, what? You want you want me to coach you? Okay, um, maybe we could do this over three months or six months and figure it out, right? You don't need testimonials. You don't need any of that. You need to start with integrity, to have, you know, some baseline knowledge and and some baseline ideas and tools that have worked for you or the knowing of what didn't work and what would work better. You need to have a desire to serve and you need to be resourceful. Everything else is noise. Okay. Some bonuses that I had mentioned. There's two bonuses that I think can really help you be better and and improve. Um, Which, by the way, I started and built my coaching business without anything else other than those three things. Serious as a heart attack. I just knew that I had a process that worked for me. I wanted to make it work for others. I was, I had a desire to serve And I was willing to get resourceful. I knew I could go find the answers and then regurgitate it in a way that would be way more understandable for my clients than if they went out and found their own answers. But some things that might help you build a little bit faster than I did if you're doing this on your own, which you don't have to, the Wealthy Coach Blueprint, don't forget. Um, But if you are and you want to do it faster and with a little bit more confidence and a little bit more effectively in the sales realm development department that's what I was looking for then you might want a framework to determine or define your coaching methodology how you work with people a framework is really just like a step-by-step process to take them through to get them to where they want to go this is something that we 
go hard on and develop inside of the Wealthy Coach Blueprint, a framework. And then the second thing is communication, aka like understanding of human behavior. When you understand that coaching is far more about behavioral understanding and how to help people change their behaviors and their habits rather than just regurgitating information to your clients about how amazing you are and how well-educated you are on some random financial topic, that's when you know that understanding why people do the things they do or why they don't do the things they do will really help you be a better coach. Now, this is, again, something that I think you could get a certification. I did get a certification in this eventually, my neurolinguistic programming. But if I didn't have a client to practice it on, I wouldn't have known how to implement it. So I am so grateful that I actually waited to really work on these skills. I had a baseline understanding of how to educate and coach people, right? I, and by no means was it from very much of anything. It was just from lived experience. Um, but developing and working on my communication and human behavioral understanding skills, that definitely helped me. But only when it got to the point where I really knew how I would implement it. So I say this bonus while also, you know, making sure to reiterate how important it is to act before you procrastinate learn because this is definitely another way that you could procrastinate learn before you get out there and build your coaching business and have clients who then need help in that level. And there's definitely lots of resources for you to tap into even beyond you don't necessarily need a certification just kind of learning from from reading books or watching YouTube channels just to learn how and why humans develop. Even this podcast has a lot of information around NLP and money mindset is a big piece of it. We have an entire series on money mindset that can help you kind of really identify why your clients are doing or are not doing certain things that you would like them to do. So it can also come, this this part can come through experience and being a student while you are the teacher. You're allowed to work on yourself and learn and grow while you're working and helping other people. In fact, let me be honest, the growing and the learning on yourself, the working on yourself, it never ends. I do it every day. It will always continue. And business ownership and entrepreneurship is the, it's inevitable to have a personal development experience because Business ownership will bring out the things that you know you need to work on and they'll hit you smack in the face with them because, I don't know, it pulls you out of your comfort zone so fast. That's why it's good to have a coach and have a mentor to support you while you go through this process. So that's it. I wish I could say, oh, you have to go out and learn these things before you start your coaching business, but that's entirely untrue. You are ready to start now. And as much as you want to feel ready, ready is not a feeling, it's a decision. If you have an understanding of how you got to where you're at now, and now you have the desire to learn, and you're willing to get resourceful to fill in any gaps that might exist, then you are ready to build your coaching business. You are ready to take on clients. You are ready to change lives. Of course, we can help you navigate that inside of the Wealthy Coach Blueprint if you want to get in, I implore you to head to wanderwealthy.com slash apply, fill out the application, schedule your call. Let's talk about it. Let's see why now is the time to do this and let's make it happen. So wanderwealthy.com slash apply. If you want to get at the show notes for this week's episode, head to wanderwealthypodcast.com slash podcast slash episode 198. We are gearing up for the holidays around here. There are going to be two podcast episodes left before the new year, and I cannot wait. Our 200th episode is coming up, so buckle in. I'm going to be sharing 20 lessons learned from 200 episodes in 2020. Well, I don't know if the lessons will come from 2020, but we'll figure it out. It's going to be a fun one. And still next week, we're going to have a good one as well. And yeah, until then, I hope we get to chat in a strategy session. 
And until we talk then or next week, I hope you wander wealthy.